Hey, Sonic Graver here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video on some commentary on Star Wars music and where Star Wars music is headed. Now, a few weeks back, I had posted a video on my thoughts regarding Star Wars Clone Wars Season 7, in particular, the electronic music score and what Kevin Kiner was currently doing with Star Wars music. And the gist of it was that while Kiner had an objectively good score, there were telltale signs showing me that Star Wars music is departing from what has come before, from what we know it to be. And that is in part due to the misuse of musical themes, that Kiner, whether he knows it or not, he's actually veering away from how John Williams had used thematic writing in his music scores. And it's in John Williams' treatment of musical themes that should be the impetus, that really has been the impetus for the last 40 years. And it's the key thing that's going to keep what we know to be Star Wars music intact. So with this, we are moving on to the sequel trilogy composed by none other than John Williams himself. Now, I do want to stress that while this is John Williams' score, this is John Williams through and through, I did find some telltale signs in this score that also says to me that we are departing from what has come before. Now, whatever I have to say regarding the score, this is not coming from any speculation as to what John Williams himself may have thought when writing this score nor is it a critique of the score. This is, as with Kevin Kiner's, objectively good in every way in terms of music composition. These are just different treatments I've noticed from what we have seen in the original trilogy. So as it is a trilogy, we'll look at each film separately, starting with The Force Awakens, the first installment. So let's talk about Kylo Ren. He is the first established villain we see in this film, and let's talk about what John Williams has done for him. Now, you may be able to find Kylo Ren's theme on the internet, but I've got news for you. That is not a theme. He has what is called a musical motive. This is motivic writing. His idea, the idea of who he is as a character, is actually a musical gesture. It's not really expressed any more than a musical gesture. In fact, it doesn't exceed more than five notes. That's not a theme. A theme is a complete melody. And these five notes do not exceed more than two bars in length. Now, the gesture on its own is quite powerful. The first two notes clash. They are a semitone apart. It causes dissonance. It causes this unsettling idea of this conflicted villain. But two to five notes for a main character is not enough because it actually causes confusion in later scenes, as we will see a specific scene in The Last Jedi, the second installment. But until then, we will move on to Kylo Ren's nemesis, Rey, the uh, <coughs> hero of the story. Now, in contrast to Kylo Ren's theme, Rey has a complete theme. It has up to 12 bars in length, whereas Kylo Ren's motivic idea is only two bars in length. So it is a complete theme as we would expect our main protagonist to have. Luke Skywalker also had a main theme, but the difference between his theme in its treatment and Rey's theme and its treatment is quite a big one. When Luke is introduced, on screen, we hear his theme, and it's a solo French horn with maybe a little bit of percussion or a pizzicato in the strings, but something very light. It's the main theme accompanied by something very light, some very light texture. With Ray's theme, on the other hand, it does not come until 33 seconds in after some orchestral activity. In fact, when it does come in, it's already embedded in a tapestry of an entire orchestra. And I will say that this is why I could not for the longest time remember her theme. And one last thing about Ray's theme I found peculiar was the instrumentation. 
In the introduction, John Williams uses chimes or some kind of bells ensemble. Now that may sound innocent enough, but we haven't heard that kind of instrumentation before in Star Wars. And when I heard those bells, those little chimes, I wasn't thinking about Star Wars. I was thinking about Harry Potter. I will say quickly about Leia and Han's theme. It was, to me, quite off-putting. It didn't feel earned. We had a romance established with these two characters, and when we see them in The Force Awakens, they're an older couple, they split up, Han went back to his smuggling ventures, Leia, of course, is a cool leader, as she always was, but it just wasn't the same two characters. Leia and her romance with Han is really what changed Han as a character for the better. It was part of his arc. So to use this love theme between them after they've split up, I think is a misstep. Now Luke's theme, also known as the main Star Wars theme, is heard, but it's not heard when we see him. It's heard in rather an obscure part of the plot. It's heard when Poe and his team try to take out this thermal oscillator. Now, it's not the full melody. This melody never finishes. It's, it's kind of like, I got the impression like it was speaking out of turn, like the music was wondering if it should speak out. And I thought that was kind of funny because I didn't think actually it was appropriate to introduce Luke's theme in a way where we don't see Luke or see his influence. And when we do see Luke at that last scene of The Force Awakens, it's actually quite disturbing. We don't hear his theme. Rather, we hear this ominous music. And this music is peculiar because it's got that same chromatic harmony and tension that is similar to the Imperial March. Isn't this supposed to be Luke Skywalker, the Paragon? I thought that music was quite off. It was not right. I know perhaps Williams or Abrams wanted some mystery and some intrigue, but I was thinking of the Imperial March. I should not be thinking of the Imperial March when I see Luke Skywalker, our hero. Now moving on to The Last Jedi, the second installment of this trilogy, I did want to point out a few instances of these musical themes that I thought were pretty confusing. We'll start with Kylo Ren's theme, which is in fact a motive. And we see here at the very start of the film that his theme is now used for the First Order, whether he is in the scene or not. So that was confusing for me, hearing that musical motive that belongs to Kylo Ren, but seeing it used for the First Order. I don't think this happened in Force Awakens, but this happens almost immediately in the first three minutes of The Last Jedi. Now I want to go a little deeper into Kylo Ren's theme and why using a motivic gesture, a musical gesture, for a main character can cause confusion. Because it's so brief, because a motivic idea is so brief, any other musical gesture in the film could make me think of Kylo Ren. For instance, I thought of Kylo Ren when Luke is showing Rey the Jedi Mountain for the first time. Now, Kylo Ren is not mentioned, he's not seen, he's not even really thought of as far as the characters are concerned. But the reason why I thought of Kylo Ren was because Williams used two notes. He started with one note and he dropped it down one semitone. These two notes in the scene in the Jedi Temple had the same intervallic relationship as the first two notes of Kylo Ren's motivic gesture. I don't think this would be a problem if Kylo Ren had a melody of some length. Now, even more confusing and more detrimental to the storytelling, Kylo Ren's motivic gesture appears when Rey discovers that Luke has closed himself off from the Force. Now, this may have something to do with foreshadowing in the story in that we need to see some relationship between Kylo Ren and Luke Skywalker, and that could be an effective musical strategy. 
Whether they were intentional with that strategy or not behind the scenes, I'm not sure. But this kind of strategy was not consistently effective, as we will see in another scene involving two other characters. Admiral Haldo was a very confusing character, and the music did not help. When she belittles Poe Dameron before dismissing him altogether, we hear, you guessed it, Kylo Ren's motivic idea. Whether it's chromatically the same, or whether it's the same sequence of notes, or similar intervallic relationships, it is Kylo Ren's theme. When I saw this in theaters, I was convinced she was a spy because I had heard that motivic idea. I thought she was part of the First Order. So when her arc was brought to a close and she was a good guy in the end, I was confused. That musical line confused me regarding the story. And to top it off with her character, when she is first introduced, when she first enters the scene, we have a bit of the force theme. But after four notes, the notes are inverted where it drops down. It doesn't have that swelling idea of hope, that beacon of hope. But you shouldn't start the force theme with a character who is not a force user, who doesn't have an understanding of the force, or who does not support the force. So that's also another confusing way they included this music with her character and with that scene. And the last theme I want to talk about that is in this installment is the Luke and Leia theme. This is a beloved theme that happens only once in the original trilogy. It's a beloved theme that expresses compassion and love and kinship between a brother and a sister. And it was very odd to hear this theme introduced in the last sequence of this film, The Last Jedi. Mainly because the two characters that you see on screen here are not the characters that were established at the end of the original trilogy. Luke, in this film, is a failure who loses hope in doing good, no matter the cost. And he has, up until this point, abandoned his sister. Leia, in this film, at the very end, publicly states to her rebellion that hope is lost. That is not Leia. That is not Luke. These are not the iconic characters that had come before. So I think it was quite improper to use this theme in a scene like this. And moving on to the last installment, The Rise of Skywalker, it's all around pretty consistent with established themes, but there are some bad musical cues. One of which is when Rey enters the throne room of the second Death Star. The music they use for that scene is the same music and instrumentation for when Luke takes off Vader's helmet and sees his father for the first time before he dies. That scene has absolutely no connection to this scene with Rey. We also see another misuse of the Force theme when Lando comes in to comfort Poe as the young man assumes his new role as general. Lando, as far as we know, is not a Force user, so it feels very odd, as though this theme is either shoehorned in for a character we know already and really like, or whether we are expanding this idea of the Force. Either way, it is a little confusing. We have another scene where a theme is misused. Yoda's theme appears when Luke, as a Force ghost, brings the X-Wing out of the water for Rey to fly away in. And it's very strange because... It's the exact same instrumentation. None of the instrumentation or any instruments of the orchestra have changed in this theme. It's a replication of what we hear in Empire Strikes Back. Now, Luke and Leia's theme 
comes back, and it's used in a very strange way. It's used when Lando is speaking with a young woman named Janna. The writing is heavily implying that Janna has some kind of relationship with Lando, like a long-lost daughter or a relative of some kind. But this is really strange. We're using Luke and Leia's theme. It's not just a theme between brother and sister. It's a theme between two very specific characters. So what is this telling us? Are we now using this theme for all family members, for different relatives, for companions? What does this theme actually mean? And lastly, to close, the Force theme at the very end does not conclude in the way it has in the original and prequel trilogies. Notes are inverted where you drop an octave down, and it has a very ambiguous chromatic effect before going into the credits. I think in a strange way this is fitting, because the themes have not been used properly. Even with John Williams behind the scenes, we are seeing a misstep. We are seeing a departure from what has come before. And ironically, that is part of the writing of the sequel trilogy. In so many ways, the sequel trilogy has erased, in many respects, music, characters, story writing, in many ways has erased what has come before. But we will always hold the original trilogy and that original iconic music score by John Williams as a standard for cinematic filmmaking and musical drama. Thank you for always watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some sound experimentation every Thursday, some live commentary every Monday nights at 9.30 Eastern Time. And until then, keep producing the art you love, and I'll catch you later.